Let's do a video on some monitors and let's go over some basic husbandry and setups, the parameters of keeping, uh, in this case, well, let's, let's look at Indonesian monitors. So Indonesian monitors definitely appreciate humidity in their lives. They obviously appreciate heat and uh, water sources and everything like that. So let's go over a couple things. So right here, we are looking at a little black roughneck and that little black roughneck is eating a lobster roach. I use lobster roaches at Nerd. Uh, obviously, I, I have dubious and stuff like that, but I really like lobster roaches because they're, they're very prolific. Um, they're soft body, they don't get too big. The drawbacks are they can climb, climb glass and they flutter a little bit. So uh, they don't seem to, you know, they don't do well in a, in a cooler house or anything like that. And we certainly have lobster roaches running around here, but I've never really found any problem. They don't become, uh, in, you know, there's no infestations or anything like that. But a lobster roach is a wonderfully good food source. Let's keep going with this. Okay, here is a roach breeding bin. In this case, I get these big giant HDX 55 gallon bins. I hear my chicken, he's my pet. And uh, we're right now, they, they've just been gut loaded. And when I gut load, I use anything from a good quality dog food, uh, cat food, Missouri tortoise diet, Missouri crocodilian diet, anything that has, you know, some good protein in it. Then I feed tons of veggies and fruit. So you can see there's some cherry tomatoes there and those orange slices. So a few hours before I go and feed my lizards, I go and get lots of food for my roaches and I gut load them. I want them as fat as can be. Cause remember the benefits of whatever is in the gut of that feeder insect now is passed on to a little animal like this. And in captivity, these guys are exclusively dependent on us for what we're feeding. So we're feeding them uh, roaches, sometimes crickets, but I don't really like crickets. Crickets are kind of dirty. I'll do it here and there, but I want my in-house feeder insects they are clean. They don't have uh, deer mice visiting them, nothing. And obviously uh, rodents, pinkies. I use a lot of you know defrosted rodents. That works really well. Uh, I've been getting, I just got a really nice load of uh, rodents from Squeals on Wheels. They're down out of uh, New Jersey, New York. And uh, he provides lots of awesome rodents for my reptiles. So anyways, back to this. So let's look at some of the parameters. So I'm using a tile or a couple tiles. And I like that because basically what that does is I take a flood lamp, not a spot lamp, a flood lamp. So flood lamp is gonna spread the UVA. So the UVA is, is the heat that we're feeling. It, obviously we're getting visual light, but what's really important is getting that heat to uh, basically heat this tile up. And I think I would ultimately look for maybe about 130 degrees from that tile once it's heated up. I'm using a UV light. I like UV light. That's ZoomEd. We use lots of ZoomEd here. Their, their bulbs are, you know, are great. Those are vital lights, but ZoomEd has great stuff. I do like UVB whenever possible. I think it's a good idea. I think uh, animal, certainly uh, there's no negative to it. And I think there's only benefits. So we have this light on here. Let's say every day that's 12 to 14 hours of basking. Then we have an area where once the animal heats up, it can move off. Uh, in this case, I use, uh, these are recycled cardboard egg crates. So they basically have like uh, an area that they can go and hide. So right now I have five of these little captive hatch black roughnecks in each one of these enclosures. And uh, trick is, Make it so you can keep it real clean. I'm using newspaper as a substrate. My humidity here is about 60%. Um, the real place where these guys basically, you know, soil the most, it's their water dish. So their water dishes, I make sure they have a way to get in and out and I keep the water shallow. But this is periodically, we're, we're changing this. So five animals, you can get away with changing this once a day sometimes twice a day, depending on what they're eating. If these are uh, Salvatores, you know, the Asian water monitors, and they're a little bit bigger, they'd have a little bit more impact on this cage. But the trick is, try to keep things clean. So make your setup 
or something you can actually manage and, and keep it clean. And a lot of it is ending up in here. So the rest of the cage isn't nearly as impacted as you'd actually think. Uh, these egg crates work great, but any kind of substrate or kind of fixtures that they can get under or in between. They really like to get in between here. They're gonna just sit in there. So once they load up after their morning bask and then they, they eat, they'll go and hide for a while and then periodically throughout the day, you'll see some of them. So remember, hot spot about 130 degrees, ambient. So the ambient temperature. So that would be the temperature that once I shut my lights up, and then it's nighttime, wherever the animal's sitting, whatever the basic room temperature is. Well, here at Nerd, we're pretty warm. So our ambience are pretty much always like 82, 84 at this time of year. Uh, probably 80 at the coldest. And uh, that's all suitable for, for baby monitors in this case, as long as they're nice and healthy. An ambient of 82, 84 is, is rather ideal. So that means that this is the temperature where these guys could digest their food still at night without the auxiliary heat source. But the heat source is gonna allow them to rev up their metabolism, get their, get their bodies going, functioning, so they can digest whatever they're eating during their normal active part of the day. Look at that guy. That is one heck of a good looking uh, black roughneck. Black roughnecks are are a great monitor. Uh, they never bite. Uh, generally, they're very, very sweet. Uh, so this is Varanus ruticolis, and uh, just just a very sweet, wonderful little animal. Uh, they they turn you know rather black as they get bigger, but these guys have just amazing pattern and color. And yes, I have some uh, captive hatched little babies right now that are for sale, and we will post that. Ah, look at that. These are just awesome. What else can I say about these? So some of the failures I would do here is, let's say I didn't manage the humidity right. So let's say in our normal house, at least in New England, our humidities will really drop down. So it'll get really, really dry. So, you know, really dry could be you know, 20%, maybe even 30%. I don't sit here with a humidistat constantly looking at, you know, humidity levels. But when we obviously when we're talking about humidity, we're talking about basically moisture in the air. And uh, even with, with people, if, I, if we took, let's say it's 30 degrees outside and my humidity was really low, it could really feel cold. But if you added a bunch of humidity to the air, suddenly it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like 30 degrees. So 30 degrees, if it's really dry out, with very low humidity, it might feel like it's 20. But if you take 30 degrees and you add a bunch of humidity, like after it snows or something like that, you can actually go outside and you're like, wow, it's not really that bad. But that all has to do with humidity. Humidity has a strong impact on reptiles. So we, we wanna you know, keep, keep all those points in our minds. But you know, humidity, 50% or better. But when we have a, you know open water vessel right here, and then we have reasonably enclosed areas, so we have sliding glass, uh, so it's going to hold humidity in there. It's certainly going to be more humid in that cage with this heat source than it's going to be out in my ambient environment. So uh, if we're using cages with screen tops and we're putting a basking light on the top, we basically want to realize that is still going to probably pretty much be the, the relative humidity of your room because you've done nothing to trap humidity in. Uh, we also don't want a cage where the you know air is is just laden with moisture and you see water beating up everywhere, that's not gonna be healthy because that's basically gonna be a great place for something like fungal and bacterial infections. If this animal's sitting wet all the time, even though it's warm, but if it's wet and it's damp and it can't really rid itself of that moisture on its body, pretty quickly you're gonna start getting bacterial lesions or fungal lesions. And so uh, we don't want that because that's that's, like literally death and it's it's so unhealthy for these animals. They really want to be able to bask and completely dry themselves out. All right. So hopefully people found some value to this. Yep, I've been uh I've taken a break from my monitor videos, although we have monitors everywhere. Just 
looking around. Um, let's see, is there anybody out? Nope, everybody's hiding. But anyways, okay, so some basic Varanus Husbandry 101. Ask away with your questions because uh, it'll certainly help me like focus on the things that I'm missing. All right, guys, say goodbye.